Good morning. Welcome to the Techno Fundamental Report for October the 12th. Investment accounting. I think we ought to just take a quick minute here and look at some key numbers. Warren Buffett's uh, favorite number is return on equity. So, you know, if you look at stocks over the long term or even short term, earnings, corporate earnings are key. Now, we're of the opinion that the only two macroeconomic factors that you should pay attention to is corporate profits and interest rates. And we all know that interest rates have been in an uptrend. However, rates are looking like they're pulling back a little bit. We'll look at that as we get going. But anyway, return on equity is a very, very simple calculation. What you do is you take the net income for the period. Usually it's done every 90 days. Companies report every 90 days. And then you divide that number by average shareholders' equity, which is assets minus liabilities. In other words, net worth divided into net income. So if you think about the calculation this way, if you get a return on equity of, let's say, 10 to 15%, which we think is about where you should go for it. In other words, if you have a company that has a, a return on equity of like 30 40 50%, that's not sustainable. So you really want to see a steady... Uh, return on equity over a period of time. But the way to look at it is, if you're getting a 10 to a 15% return on equity, it means that the assets of the corporation are earning 15%, 10 to 15%. So it's like a CD. They could go to, a, if they would liquidate the company, take all the assets and go to a bank, they'd have to make 10 to 15% return on a CD. So return on equity is a very important number. I would say you should watch it over time, though. It, it's, it's something that you want to see a steady return on equity. You don't want to see big, up, big quarters, down quarters, that kind of thing. So what Buffett goes on to say, he says, A good business is like a strong castle with a deep moat around it. I want sharks in the moat. I want it untouchable. What he's saying is, is that when you have a company that can maintain its return on equity, it means that competition is really not the big issue for them. You know, if you think about like his, one of his favorite stocks would be Coca-Cola, high return on equity, very steady, and it's really pretty much a moat around Coca-Cola. Then he has another quote here, no matter how great the talent or efforts, some things just take time. You can't produce a baby in a month by getting nine women pregnant. So in other words, when you find a good company, sometimes it just takes time for the numbers to come together and for the investment to work out. Now, I did want to just say, you know, in a, the, the old saying is, in a recession, your neighbor loses their job. In a depression, you lose your job. And we're hearing a lot of talk about, you know, re recession fears and so forth. Well, total non-farm payrolls continues to make new highs. Everybody's got a job. Now, you can see back here in prior recessions, I mean, you can see the downturn, the downturn, the downturn from COVID. This was the downturn from the financial crisis. This is the downturn from the dot-coms. Now, also, I, I went ahead and took a look at industrial production, and uh, I really don't see a problem here. So these particular indicators are what, uh, you know, the Federal Reserve looks at and various people look at to determine how well is the economy doing, and it looks like it's doing well to me. Now, <clears throat> when we come down to finding a good investment, it's kind of like you're in the ring and you're a boxer. And if you look down here, this is Apple back in 2002, 2003. You can see it was kind of like the uh, you had a really nice consolidation here. In other words, let's define a base. A base is a period of sideways movement. In other words, the boxers are fighting it out. The buyers, the sellers, the buyers, the sellers, the buyers, the sellers. And then whammy, the boxer gets a knockout, the buyers come in, and the stock goes into an uptrend. So it's kind of interesting. Let's take a look at the market. I've got a couple of indexes here. I'm not going to show all five this morning just because of time. But we are seeing some improvement here, and it's, it's encouraging. Uh, we, you kind of see a cup formation here where you're getting a, a, a rolling bottom, just, just like the opposite of a rolling top. So the NASDAQ is actually performing quite well. It has gotten above some key moving averages. And if you look at our trend meter, we've moved back into the green. So NASDAQ is looking better. Now, the small caps have more work to do. 
Uh, it's just the way it is. Uh, but we did see possibly the beginning of a bottoming formation here. You can see on the trend meter that the, the small caps have really been having a tough time. Now the S&P 500, kind of like the NASDAQ, uh, the trend meter has not gotten back to green, but it's moving up. We are getting that rolling bottom look, which just, just looks better. It looks better than it did last week, put it that way. Now on, on the interest rates. Now this is the power index. Now what we're doing here is we're, we're looking at interest rates over a period of time. And so the thing to realize is interest rates, about interest rates, is that it's the direction, it's not the level. In other words, right now we're at 4.6% on the five-year treasury, but you can kind of see here too that that interest rate is starting to roll over. So with the power index, what we're measuring here is the rate of change in interest rates. And as, as it moves back down towards zero, that's a positive. So we're not on a buy signal for bonds or you know, hopefully stocks as well, but it is starting to improve. Now, realize now that the big up move was in this period here, which was mid-September. As the days go by, we'll drop off these particular uh, weeks. And if, if rates stop going up, which is kind of what's happening here, this particular indicator will give a buy signal at some point. So let's just keep an eye on the power index. It is looking better. Now, the main trend is still up. This is the 200-day moving average on the NASDAQ, I mean on the S&P. This is the 200-day moving average on the NASDAQ. Both of these moving averages are in uptrends. So, you know, if we go back to 2022, you can see how bad it was. It was just all under the 200-day in a downtrend. That is somewhat reversing. So the primary trend continues up. Now, really what's encouraging here is the fact that the aggression index actually hit a new high since the low back in December of 22. Now, I do believe that we went through, in 2020, our portfolios went up over 60% that year. And then everything peaked out in January, February of 21. And then we've basically seen what looks like to me a, a, a mini bubble popping. So why is this important? It's important because the stocks that participated in the leadership of this move here that basically became a bubble, we could call it the Tesla bubble, we could call it the EV bubble, the solar bubble, whatever you want to call it, technology bubble, but it does look like there was a popping of the bubble and we're, we totally deflated here when we got down to December of, um, of 22. So we're starting to come back. But the, the point is, is that just like anybody, I would always want to go back to these names and try to relive that experience. Well, unfortunately, what's probably going to happen here, more than likely is going to happen, is there'll be a whole new group of leadership that'll take the lead in the market. Now, on our three economic indicators, you can see here interest rates have turned down. Uh, oil, oil has turned down and the financial stocks are starting to show improvement. So again, the three economic indicators are basically saying, sit tight. Now on the new lows, we've seen improvement in new lows. Just the other day, we only had 27 new lows, which is below 40. Now we've had a bunch back in, you know, mid-September, early October, we had a bunch of new lows when the market was really having a tough time. Now this is the semiconductor index. I think this is an important ETF the VanEck Semiconductor ETF. You can see here, just like I was pointing out about the NASDAQ, you know, you're getting that rolling bottom look. It, you know, it's somewhat forming a cup and trying to get going back into an uptrend again. So the semiconductors are looking better, and that's a very important group. Uh, we're finding some green shoots, what we call green shoots. These are companies that we have identified in our work. This is Onto Innovation. They make tools, maintenance tools for the semiconductor manufacturers. And with what's going on with, you know, artificial intelligence and so forth, semiconductors are the big deal. So you can see here with this particular company, what we first noticed was they announced earnings, a big gap up in the price, consolidated, you know, we're back in the ring as a boxer going back and forth. But then again, it looks like the buyers are taking back over again. This looks good. Also, you can see where the volume is coming in. So you got a gap up, a consolidation, and another breakout. I think that we own the stock. We've actually bought this stock. 
This is Vertive Holdings. And what they do is thermal control of data centers. I was talking to a friend of mine the other day who's in the real estate business out in California, and he was basically saying that the hottest real estate right now is the data centers and the medical properties. Uh, he was saying commercial's dead as a doornail. But anyway, you can see here with Vertive, we got the gap up on earnings, a nice consolidation, resumption of an uptrend, additional consolidation, which is building a base, and then it's breaking out of the base on above average volume. So these companies, by the way, both of them have returns on equity in the 10 to 15% range, and they've been pretty darn consistent. So let me know if you have any questions. Thank you very much.